Did you enjoy our program? Or do you have any questions or feedback on what you just heard? Email us at rti at rti.org.tw. That's rti at rti.org.tw. And we will respond to all of your comments. We look forward to hearing from you. Welcome back to Radio Taiwan International. You're listening to Geek Out. What's your cup of tea? Tickles your fancy or floats your boat? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. I'm your host, Michelle Chang, and today in the studio we have two of my very good friends, Ivy and Shaniqua. <laughs> well, first of all, let me let me just preface this by saying that these are pseudonyms. They're not the actual names of the people who are in here. <laughs> That's why we are laughing. But yeah, um... In case we need to refer to each other during the uh, during the show, Ivy is here to talk about animal. Where all three of us are actually huge animal lovers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So why are why 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 are we talking about animals? What do you do, Ivy? In terms of animals, mm. uh, I guess I spend a lot of time feeding stray cats because I live in the mountains, so there's quite a few cats there. Right, and I will also do some TNR, mm-hmm. which is trap, neuter, and is it release or return now? Or is it interchangeable? You know, I think it's interchangeable. I've heard it release, trap into release, and some people say return. Return, right? Technically, it's supposed to be return because you're supposed to put them back. Back where you found them. Exactly. In the same, same. location. Right. So, And then I also foster. Yay. I mean, I've, I have been helping Ivy with this for quite a while. To be fair, listeners who are not based in Taiwan and are, you know, animal fans, the situation in Taipei, we're, we're in Taipei specifically, has improved over the years drastically. When mm. it comes to animal welfare, as you guys have heard before, I was here in high school pre two thousand, and there were still a lot of strays, a lot of strays um, around even this capital city, especially if you went up into the mountains, right? Yeah, there are a lot of stray a dogs, lot. a lot of stray cats, and it's you just could a lot less now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. visibly see a mm. lot of you know health issues. And today, well, over these o- over this past what like twenty three odd years that uh, since high school, it has improved to the point where it's actually really hard to see stray cats in the city now sometimes occasionally i will catch a glimpse of one but for the most part they're they've been uh they've been managed pretty well i think that's the situation for up here north in taipei though in taipei specifically. i think further south where there's more country and more rural i no, that's ab- absolutely true like when we went uh down to xiao Cho, there were lots of stray cats mm. taipei specifically is very well managed so in the mountains um you have encountered Lots of cats. How many so far have you helped? I've never really counted. Maybe like roundabouts. It's not like a lot. How many are there? Have have you met up in the mountains and fed them and or oh, TNR or maybe twenty something, thirty 20 something. something like that. And then occasionally you'll you'll get like a prego or a mom. Yeah. Then we have kittens, and then we get to rehome them, which is fun. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, um, Shuniwa. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, every time I say that, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it's also an animal person. Dude, we're, all three of us are huge animal people in the, in the studio today. Tell us about your menagerie. I find like baby birds on the street <laughs> where people find them and then they just be like, hey, I found baby birds. What do I do? And they bring it over. Baby birds are actually pretty hard. I mean, uh, my, my mom has done a parrot before, right? It, it's it's like raising a child. Yeah, you have to feed them like every two to three hours. Yeah, and make it. You have to make formula, like mm-hmm. literally. That they don't. They it, you have to mix up this um, special bird formula. It's not milk. Yeah, it's like this powder. It's a powder, um, and then you have to hand feed them, mm-hmm. um, and they make a. We use a syringe, like yeah, empty, empty syringe, and they make a huge mess. That baby parrot was just like splattering oh. the food everywhere, and it was just. Then you have to clean the bird afterwards, and it becomes a situation. Um, how many birds have you done so far? I don't know. I feel like I find at least one or two a year. Huh? Just very randomly. I don't understand how you just find <laughs> baby birds. I mean, I've lived here a long time. Yeah. And I've only ever found the one that I did last year. And and then I gave it to you because yeah. I don't know what to do with a baby bird. Right, right, right. But like, I've only found one once. I don't know. Have you ever found one? I found one. Really? Yeah, I, tur- I I gave it. I didn't know that you did baby birds at that point, Shaniqua. <laughs> so I gave it to somebody on the on the bird road here, 
for listeners who don't know what that is there's a taipei is funny where they have like districts that sell things so there's like ah, a fabric yeah. district there's an aquarium district and there's a bird road yeah. where it's just a line line with bird stores yeah. oh and they they, they willingly they, yeah, took it they, they took it yeah okay so you didn't give it to some official bird rescue no, organization because no, no, no. there are those yeah. as well yeah but they're not like the dongbaoju is fair i don't though. think they can help yeah that. they're not very well uh financed or no anything. they're not Generally, no animal, re- you know, welfare or rescue organization is really well financed, oh, which is um, unfortunate. People who are of of means, please donate to your local animal rescue people. They need it. I think it's still a while here, though. Yeah. Like, I was following somebody's account in Instagram, and they're, like, New York-based, and they just opened up this new TNR center. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I wonder when that'll ever happen here. There, I don't know. There's no TNR... The, there isn't no I mean I'm happy that we just have free, free spay and neuter programs that are now touring uh, are they free? they're not free yeah there are now free ones in Taiwan? in Taiwan oh so they might not be constantly in one location but they mm. are kind of like a traveling vet for people to bring oh. in their own house pet to be spayed or neutered for free trying to promote not having accidental litters in the house I mean I know like some certain vet clinics work with the government so they kind of get a stipend yeah but I don't know how you would have access to that. I think you have to be part of a organization, mm-hmm. a rescue organization. Yeah, because like if you find like a stray cat or dog and mm-hmm. you're like, okay, I'm going to be nice and I'm going to spay this. Right. They're not going to offer that to you if you're just like a random. Random. Yeah, you need to be part of an organization, I think. Right. And or the vet is the type of kind hearted person to simply offer these knowing that you. Right. Well, found that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. different. Yeah. But overall, I mean, do we feel like this is a very rewarding? thing to get into in Ta- in Taiwan? I'm going to say absolutely. Do we all have stories of our of the animals that we've rescued? Yeah. I, like what kind of stories? <laughs> I mean, your know, own personal stories or or story of, of animals that you currently, you know, I just have, have like foster have fail stories. Foster fails, right? Yeah. I mean, coconut specifically. People have heard of coconut Satan, aka my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> Lives in my house. We found him. Uh, someone I know found him when he was two days old. Like, was it somebody you knew or like a random internet stranger? Uh, I thought it was a random internet stranger. A friend of a friend, basically. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a total mm. stranger. Because they also needed a reference that I knew what I was doing mm. um, w- with neonatals. Neonatal kittens are also like human babies where they need, they can't see, they can't hear, mm. they need they need body heat regulation and a whole bunch of other requirements. So uh, you do need to know what you're doing if you're taking in, especially a single, a single one neonatal kitten. So um, I get a message and it's like, do you want to take this kitten? And I'm like, uh, sure. It turns out this kitten grew up to be horribly bitey and aggressive, but also cuddly, you know, when he wants to be. And I love the guy. What are your foster fails? My foster fell. So I have the... Wait, how many dogs do you have, first of all? Right now, just four. Okay. Just four. Just four. Just four. <laughs> and what are they? What, what kind of dogs are they? And they're all over 10. They're all senior dogs. Okay. I have a standard poodle, regular size poodle, a teacup poodle, Aww. and a long-haired dachshund. 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 A wiener dog. A wiener dog. Wiener yeah. dog. Yeah. So the wiener dog is the foster <laughs> fail. So a friend of a friend of a friend. Uh-huh. You know, that's kind of how this yeah, happens, it's always, right? it's always It's always how this happens. But they usually always contact me. They're like, there's a dog. Can you help? <laughs> a friend of a friend of a friend. I guess uh, her parents had the dog. The dad the dad passed. And I think oh, the no. dad is the one that was babying mm-hmm. the dog. And the mom is like, uh, she just couldn't take care of the dog. So they were looking for someone. Um, it, was a, it was a temp thing because the daughter was going to take the dog. Yeah. But she lived in Chicago. Oh, okay. So the parents just, were here yeah, yeah. in Taiwan. So she was like, I can't take the dog now, but like, you know. Can you hang on yeah, to Yeah, hang on to her and then I will come and get it. Yeah. And that was pre COVID. <laughs> oh, no. And then COVID, no, COVID, COVID. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the COVID started or hit. Yeah. Hit us in the face. And but I don't I don't think she's gonna come get the dog. Yeah. But also we're attached to her and she's yeah. very attached to us. So at this point she's ours. Yeah, she's part of your pack. But it's kind of sad because mm. she was eight when she came to us. Yeah. And they had her since she was a puppy. Mm-hmm. So you have a dog for eight years and then you know, that 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 always is something how do you that easily just like it bother that bothers me a lot. Like, but it like, wasn't the daughter's you... dog, right? Like she didn't no, take care of it. She wasn't even still, in the country. Like so every time she, she might not have back, that kind of connection, mm-hmm. though. 
Maybe, but it's different yeah. if you only see the animal like once a year or once however she off she came back like you might not have that kind of connection maybe so the dog used to get really excited when we brought out like the carry-on like oh yeah yeah because like they just take her with her yeah all the time. at places so i, I don't mean know. But it, it's really triggering for me people who give up their pets for usually it's pretty trivial like it made too much noise or i moved and the new landlord doesn't take pets and i'm like that's such bull yeah. such bull I mean, if you had a human baby, a child, right? If your new landlord didn't like children, yeah, would you give it, up your child? It cries too much. <laughs> I know, it cries too much. Would you get rid of your baby because it's too noisy? It's it's simply, you know, the, the standard that people, some people keep pets at is really not family. And it really should be that way. But our the other dog we have, so this the other one is not a foster fail. We ended up adopting it. Yay. Which one? The standard poodle. Oh, yeah. So she was also eight years old. Oh. There's a groomer that we go to. Mm -hmm. And then we went to drop off our dogs once. And my mom saw the standard poodle. And the, standard poodle's always been her, like, dream dog. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing. They're beautiful dogs. And it's hard to come by in Thailand. Yeah. Now they're more. Yeah, you see it more. More but, and more. Yeah. So my mom was like, my mom got really excited. And then that was that. We went home. And then the next time we went back, the groomer was like, do you want do you want her? And mom was like, what do you mean? She belongs to someone. <laughs> they're like, oh, the owner's looking to be home. But it's really sad. They had the dog since she was three months. Right. And apparently, they've been bringing her to the same groomer. So all the groomers all knew right. her. Right, yeah. My mom was like, well, sure, if you if she's just getting tossed out, basically. Right, that's, that's horrible. And the way they handed her <laughs> over to us is really sad, too. The lady was like, okay, well, I'm dropping her off at the groomers again. Mm -hmm. Like... On this day, you can just pick her up and take her home. So she didn't even, we've never even met the owner. She didn't even show what? up. What? And her reason was because she was like, oh, she has like a behavior problem. But she came to us and she had like, she was potty trained. She was a great dog. Did she have any oh, behavioral no. issues? No. Like she goes through trash sometimes. But all dogs. But then that, yeah, that's all not. we have to do is put up in a counter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's um, not where I can access. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was it. Like there's no other issues. I wouldn't really consider that a behavioral issue. But it's so sad. She was eight. Like, they've had her since Look, she was three months old. Behavioral issues are 99% of the time the owner's fault. Yeah, it's, fault. it's a human. It's, it's a, a human, human error. Area. Because usually you can you can, you can can change your own behavior. You can train. Something, something can be modified so that whatever behavior that is is no longer a problem, right? Yeah. So is, that was just a bull answer. But I also think that's... Even if their dog had a behavioral issue, if they were kind of attached to the dog, they would still want to be there for the handover. Right. Just to be like, this okay, is... they have ABC problems, yeah. you know, you need to be aware of, but this is her favorite food. This is her favorite thing to do. This is her favorite bed or blanket, whatever. Right. At know, least look, the, 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 the... look at the face of the new parent. Yeah. You know, that's what... Nothing. No. But she also said like, oh, because she's so big and it's, you know, it's... I mean, big dogs are hard to take care of. You have to t take them for a walk. But still, like... <sighs> Dog's you so knew big, that's when not... you got standard poodle. You knew it was gonna yeah yeah get massive. It's that, not gonna that's kind of the thing. Like a lot of it's not Clifford. Yeah. You knew what you were getting into when you when you got a standard poodle. How big a standard poodle gets? Yeah, they are predictable to a certain point. I mean, so, well, yeah, when we saw her, she was already mm -hmm. eight, so yeah. they've had her in that size already. But such garbage. Answers. But they're both happy with us. So yeah. We're happy. Yay! It's yeah. a happy ending. No, yeah. and the good thing is mm -hmm. she didn't actually come with behavioral issues no, that you had to deal with. Like, you know, it wasn't like aggression girl. or something weird no. or difficult mm -hmm. to deal with. She's yeah. such a good girl. So yeah, rewarding. Very rewarding in the end. But it's sad that people are just so easily just letting go of like dogs they've had for eight years since they exactly. were like puppies, you know? I mean, it would be a child. Yeah. Could you let? Could you just get rid of your eight-year-old? Mm, <laughs> no, I'm <just> kidding. <laughs> well, to be fair, I've met some horrible kids. <laughs> Maybe a human child. No, but not dogs. Yeah, yeah, right. So Ivy, you mo you mostly do cats. Yes, just because dogs require the walking and I'm just... You're just among cats in the mountains where there's just a lot of ferals, right? Yeah, I that's would, why I would it's say cats. Maybe, maybe about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I would still sometimes come across stray dogs, stray puppies. Remember, you came up once and right. we, we, we saved a puppy. Yeah, we did save right. a puppy. Yeah, and that saving a puppy is only something I've done twice in the mountains. And I haven't seen, honestly, dogs mm -hmm. at all anymore. They've been fixed or taken care of or something. Right. Like, yeah, I don't really see the stray dogs. Yeah. Anybody who has a dog is, is owned. Mm -hmm. And mostly fancy dogs, actually, the I know, ones right? I see I, I... that people own. Ah. Uh, yeah. Well, you should come to the dog park with me, filled with Formosas. So cute. 
<laughs> yeah, we don't. Every people near me, I've seen like Chow Chows, Bernese Mountain Dogs. You do live Great in Great a... Danes. You know. Yeah. I've seen Malamute Husky. Yeah. Oh, Husky. Why does that? Why, okay. Why do you have a musky, Husky or a Malamute? Taiwan. Like, it's just ridiculously hot. Exactly. It's a subtropical country, and it's just know. insanely hot here in the for most I, of the time. I'm really annoyed and upset every time mm, I see one. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But cats. I don't... So what? Let, let's talk about some yeah. good stories. I think my most moving one was when you found Daisy. Daisy mm-hmm. Daisy was a new mom? I don't know. About, okay, new mom, but was she first-time mom? That I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. Because I don't know her history. But yeah. she was a new mom. Basically, I always feed, I guess, outside cats. Like, I have a place in my garden that I feed yeah. all my outdoor cats. And they just come and go. Sometimes the same cats come back. Sometimes it's new cats, whatever. Mm-hmm. It's basically my feeding station there. Um, and then she had shown up and... She was like super, super, super prego. Oh, just round. Right. She was super round and like starving. <laughs> um, and so I fed her and I was hoping, you know, I could maybe try to trap her or catch her mm-hmm. before she had kittens. Yeah. But literally like maybe two, three days later, like... She gave birth. Yeah. She... And I, I think I knew she gave birth either the night before or very early that morning because she was really... It was a dry day, mm-hmm. but she was kind of like... Well, her tummy was gone, mm-hmm. and she was really, like, wet oh. from, like, the bottom down. Okay. And I was like, mm, okay, you've had them somewhere. And I was, like, kind of worried, but it's like, I don't know where she kept them. You mm-hmm. know, the mountain's huge. I don't know how far she came, right? right? So I was just like, okay. She kept showing up for food. So I, I fed her, and then on a rainy morning, I think, it was, like, raining really heavily. This is a thing I made my dad do a little while back. <laughs> just, I, just... I made him build like a little shelter for mm-hmm. cats. Because just... even though we have like a communal garden, it's just trees and open areas. There's right. nothing for cats or dogs to actually get Under. shelter yeah. or, you know, away from the rain right. or other than something. I'm just going to preface this with the fact that your parents are unwilling passengers on this train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, my parents, I mean, bless them, were not huge <laughs> animal lovers. Like... I think they just grew up in, in, in the generation mm-hmm. or the time or the place where, you know, you could barely afford to feed the people, let alone have something called pets. Like, that was just not, not a thing. Right, not on yeah. their radar. But not on their radar. As, as they've ridden this train with you, I think they've become animal people, which is adorable. I'm going to say they've become more animal people, but <laughs> I, wouldn't, supportive. I wouldn't class them as animal people. Yeah. Right, right, right. But anyway, I don't know why, but I was like, a couple years back, I was like, telling my dad, okay, I, we need to build some sort of shelter, you know, for cats to stay out the rain or if there's a typhoon and things yeah. like that. So he did. He did he, it. He, he built me one. You know, yeah. it's a really tiny thing, but it's fine. It's just in the side of the garden. Yeah. So anyway, back with Daisy is that it had rained a lot the night before, and I don't know where she had her kittens before or kept mm-hmm. them. But she had actually brought her kittens into this cat shelter that we had built. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's when I was like, okay. I mean, that's the first time it's ever happened. Yeah. You know, like mom cat bringing kittens there Mm -hmm. because those some are safe and away from the water. Yeah. So, and that's how I managed to, you know, I caught her first and then I scooped up her kittens and then... A very con- yeah, very conveniently they were able to use COVID. So you know, you mm. were also working from home a lot. I would yeah, I was, I was working from home at the time. Yeah, so, so it worked out. Yeah, that worked. But out. yeah, Daisy, she was vomiting and pooping plastic. Yeah, and that was so heart wrenching for me because I knew why. It's because she's looking for something to eat mm-hmm. and ate the plastic, and therefore had that you know had to re- eject it. And it's that's just heartbreaking. Yeah, I remember seeing that first after I brought her in. And it was like on the floor. I was like. What is that? Is, is that what I think it is? And I was like taking a photo and sending it to oh, you. I'm yeah. like, is this plastic bag? I got pictures, poop pictures. <laughs> yeah, and like vomit <laughs> pictures. I'm like, is this plastic bag? It's and you're plastic like, bag. It's plastic bag. Yeah. That's, and and I, I love what happened because, you know, she came to you for help. Mm. And it and you were able to bring her in from the cold, right? Or the hot or whatever you want to call it, the wet. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she and all of her kittens. Yes. Four of them. Yes. Four of them that look exactly like. So, you know, we know, yes. we know Daisy was monogamous. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody was homed, and it's um happy ending. No, and the surprising thing about her was that, you know, within a day of me bringing her in, she let me kind of pick up and handle her kittens. Oh, uh, you know, trust. Yeah, it's but trust. she didn't know me before, right? Mm-hmm. So I've never tried to pet her or anything. So you know, she didn't try to like eat my hand or something yeah. when I picked up her kittens. So. Um, on the other hand, Pumpkin, mm. whom you fail fostered. Yes, was pregnant. Had her kittens. We were we were foster. Uh, we we had her placed with somebody who could house her and her kittens at the same time. Was aggressive. Was like, leave. Don't touch me or my children. 
<laughs> that kind of thing. And uh, turns out that she is as cuddly as can be. Yeah. Yeah. She's and all my foster know. fail. Yeah. Um, and she's she's super special. Yeah, yeah. She's my special one. Like I don't. It's really hard for me to look back and think, okay, she was really aggressive. She was really aggressive. Because she's like the furthest thing from aggressive now. Right. She never bites. She, I can kiss her like a thousand times. I can hold her paws. I can put my face in her tummy. <laughs> like I can cuddle her and it, it like it, it doesn't really matter. Like, she she's sleeps not... next to you in the blanket. Yeah, she sleeps in my in arm the, in every crook. night. In the Man. crook of my arm every so single night. So cute. So cute. And yeah, we homed all five of her kittens. Yep. And uh, yeah, uh, two of them just moved back into the same building. So there's, the siblings meet again. It's actually like very rewarding, I think. So, right. Listeners, if you have a chance, you know, you can find either organizations or independent operators who are doing great things for animals, rescues. And yeah, donate or ask them how you can help if you don't have the cash to donate. Time is also very, very useful. Thanks for geeking out with me, Ivy and Shaniqua. You're welcome. You're welcome. And thanks, listeners, for tuning in to Radio Taiwan International. I'm Michelle Chang, and we'll be back next Thursday with another episode of Geek Out.